moving on to topic <laughs> number seven, um, yep. we're going to switch over to the ice where, you know, we're still hurting as Bruins fans as they did not move on to the third or to the Eastern Conference Finals of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Um, and one of the biggest things we saw in the last series when the Bruins lost to the Islanders in six games was Tuka Rask, who was so good, so good for the Bruins up until game five is where he really struggled. Then he struggled again in game six. After game five, there were rumblings that Tuka was hurt. Then in game six, he didn't look right. And then, of course, at the end of every NHL season, every team comes out with all their injuries. And we find out that Tuka Rask had a torn labrum. What do you think about this, Brandon? I mean, this this is like this. You got to question a lot of what the Bruins did in that playoff series after hearing about this injury for Tuka Rask. Yeah, immediately. Uh, I think I questioned their decision on playing him. And it's just really one of those things. You know, as a coach, we say there's two things. You're either hurt or you're injured, okay? So if you're hurt, that means you can still play. You're kind of just dealing with a couple of beat-up things. Most of us are dealing with that many things, especially this late in the season. If you're injured, it means you can't play to your ability and you're going to be a liability to the team. And so you shouldn't play. I think this is one of the things where he was injured, you know, and shouldn't have played it. If he was hurt, he still would have been able to play and play good and do his, his, his thing, but he couldn't. And I think we all saw that in that game five. He was just really slow between the pipes. And a lot of people were calling it, honestly, in pregame. They were saying he just looks different. He doesn't look the same. And then the game happened, and they got really blown out, and he didn't look the same at all. And then the decision was, are we going to play him in game six? Obviously, they decided to start him, and it turned out to be the wrong decision. But then this news comes out that he's dealing with an injury, and you probably should have played the backup. So honestly, I think as a Bruin fan and as an NHL fan, a lot of us are like, why? Why did you not go with the backup? I'm shocked Bruce Cassidy didn't go with the healthy guy and the guy that would have gave us a really good chance. Like you said, this kid, our, our backup goalie, is potentially the future goalie of the, of the uh, organization anyway. He's that next guy that we're going to. So this is the moment where you kind of test him out and put him in the water and let's see if he really is that next guy that's going to lead us between the pipes. But they didn't do that. They went with the veteran and he was hurt and he was injured and the Islanders, the Islanders just took advantage. So it's like, yeah, now you really have to question. I, I question Tuca not stepping up as a leader saying, I'm not 100%. I'm not ready to go. I, I'm not good. Good enough to, to get, the, get us the win, man. Go with the other guy. And you got to question the coaching decision. You, you got to question the front office decision here as well. I'm putting this all on Cassidy in the front office, okay? It, players are going to want to play through injuries. That's how they are. That's how they're wired. Tuka Rask in the past has actually kind of been honest about, you know, he's not feeling well or he's got the flu. Or, you know, last year he opted out of the uh, playoffs that were in the NHL bubble he found out later, you know, his daughter wasn't feeling great and he didn't want to bring that home. You know, that is very complicated, obviously, the bubble situation on uh, both the NFL and, I mean, the NBA and NHL. Um, yep. But, you know, so he's had sort of a history of, you know, not playing through injuries or certain things. So Tuca's going to try to play through this, you know, because he, he wants to change that reputation. As much as he, you know, sort of doesn't care about what other people think of him, because he shouldn't, because he's a really good goalie, but... He's going to try to play through that as the coach. And you're a coach, Brandon, so you can tell me if I'm wrong. Cassidy's got to say to him, listen, you got a torn labor, okay? Because I'm sure the Bruins knew at that point that he tore his labor, or at least that was a possibility. You know, how do you how do you raise your glove? Or I, I'm not sure which side it was that he had a torn, torn labor, but whether it's your glove or your stick to block shots, there's yep. no way you can do that. And the Islanders were beating him high. Um you know, and then so at some of the high shots, high on the net, and everything like that. So, you know, that had to hamper how he was going to try to to goaltend against this team. So, you know, to me, Cassidy should have been the one to make the tough decision because that's why he's the head coach to make the tough decisions and say we're going with Swayman because Swayman, as a rookie, they brought him in mid-season. He was excellent. They brought him in at the end of Game Five. He did give up a goal, but it was in the first like two minutes. He got peppered with pucks as soon as he got in there in game five um you know but i think he would have been better if he knew he was going to be the starter in game six other nhl teams do this where they switch goalies when a when a goalie either is struggling or might be a little hurt they swap goalies 
Sometimes that goalie gets hot. Sometimes that goalie stands on his head, however you want to call it. You know, so I think this is on Cassidy, and maybe it is on uh, Sweeney, and it is on um, Cam Neely as well, the front office. You know, should they have kind of stepped in and said, we know he's hurt, you got to go with the kid, you know. But, you know, it's it, hindsight's twenty twenty. but I, I just think they should have gone with Swayman. Uh, even with the fact that they pulled Tuca after the second period in game five, even a mentally tough guy like Tuca, that's going to kind of mess with your psyche during a playoff series. So I think they should have gone with Swayman. I'm surprised that Tuca started game six, and the results were what they were. Yeah, I think it's one of these things where has anybody even came out and said that they were the ones who made the decision? Has, has Cassidy said that he made the final decision on that? Um, you know, Cassidy was the one that said he was going to start game six. He was the one in the pregame press conference or the day before press conference where he said he was going to, Tuka was going to start game six. Now, maybe it wasn't Cassidy. Maybe it was Neely and Sweeney that came down and said, you got to play Tuka. You know, that's a, that's a good point. So whoever the decision came from, you know, that's that's on them, you know. And if yeah. that's the case that Sweeney and, and Neely said that you got to play Tuca, why why do you, why do you have Cassidy in there? He's the one that's supposed to make that decision. He's the one that's supposed to have his finger on the pulse of the team, you know. So he's got to be the one that makes that decision. I know you want you know input from the front office on stuff like that is important, but at the end of the day, it's got to be the head coach that's making that decision, at least in my opinion. But you're a coach, Brandon, so you would know better than me. No, I agree. I think if you are the head coach and it's your program, you want to be the one that's making those decisions. You don't want to be getting pressure from the administration or the front office to be able to, you know, have to do something or have to make a decision that you don't feel is right for your team or your program or your players. So I think, yeah, Bruce Cassidy should have maybe stepped up if if, if he was getting it. But it's really one of those things where obviously you get you get pressured from your boss and Sometimes you do have to answer to them. So it's really a tough situation. But I would like to know whose final call it was because you got some questions and we've got some questions and you got to answer those questions. It's professional sports. Um, but I, you bring up a good point with the torn labrum and, and, you know, whether it was glove side or blocker side. And I got to wonder, did the Islanders know that as well? Because like you said, they were putting a lot of those shots upper deck. So were they testing that labrum and because they knew it themselves. So it's really one of those things where now as the coach, when you really start seeing being like, they're going upper deck with everything. I've, I've got to make the play. I've got to put in big play sway. That's what I'm calling this kid now. Big play sway. Got to go with like big, play, <laughs> big play sway and, and big, put big play swayman in. And, and it's now his time to see if he can get it done because, you know, they're starting to test that labrum out. And it's really one of those things where I'm curious to see if the Islanders knew about it as well because he obviously – you know, it's professional sports, and we feel like it's closed door, closed door atmosphere. But believe it or not, it's a small world in professional sports, and it's a tight knit world. So it wouldn't shock me if they found out about his injury as well, and they took advantage of it. Um, so it's, it's it's questionable that decision and when what they made. And obviously, I it I don't know if you can say it cost us the series because we had a you know a bunch of other games to get it done. But I think it was it was pivotal. It was a pivotal decision and. And it didn't turn out well. So it's really one of those things where we've still got some questions that need to be answered. 